Welcome back. In order to use a computer, you must first find out how to turn it on. Manufacturers have a bit of a habit of hiding the button that turns the device on. Fortunately, there's a universal symbol to show which button is for power. This is it here. If you're trying to turn on a desktop computer, the first place to look for this symbol is on the front of the box here. If you can't find it, then occasionally it can be found on the top edge. Just remember that the actual computer may be hidden under a desk, so make sure you find the actual computer and press the power button on this. Quite often, if it isn't obvious where the computer is, many people will press the power button on the monitor, then stand back and wonder why nothing's happening. Just remember that this is because you've only turned the monitor or display on, and not the computer. So make sure to check that both are on if nothing appears to be happening. You might think that turning laptops on is easier. In many cases, the power button can be found along the space between the top of the keyboard and the bottom of the monitor. Normally it's a very different style of button to any of the, other, the actual keys on the keyboard. Occasionally it has feel as though manufacturers have gone to great lengths to hide the power button. So if it isn't in the space between the keyboard and monitor, try first looking down each edge. The right hand edge is a little more popular than the left, but I've known it to be found on both. Occasionally I've found it along the front edge as well, so when you're using an unfamiliar machine, make sure you take a moment to look it over. You should find the power symbols on it somewhere. Let's take a look at a few different form factors and where you're likely to find the power button on each of them. First, we have a familiar standard tower system. Where do you think the power button is? It's most likely this pink button in the middle. How about this mini or micro tower system? Where's the power button? The power button can be found here. Hopefully you didn't point to this one, as this that will only turn the monitor on, not the computer. How about this desktop computer? Where's the power button? It's most likely this button here just behind the keyboard. Now for a laptop, where's the power button? Probably this one in the middle. How about this one? Take a moment to look and consider where the button is likely to be. This is an all-in-one computer. It has the computer built into the monitor case, so in this example, we're looking for a power button on the monitor. You might still be having trouble locating it in this example. If it's not clearly on the front of the device, first run your finger along the bottom edge. You may find a few buttons hidden here. Next, run your finger down either side. It may be located here, just as often on smartphones or tablets. Lastly, I've known a few of these devices to have it located on the back. Once you know it's there, it's fairly easy to reach around and find again, as it's normally located near one of the corners. But the first time can leave you scratching your head trying to find it. Back to logging in or logging on, no one requires password, passphrase or PIN and it's a process of entering the passphrase to gain access to a computer system. Let's take a look at how to do this on a computer running Windows 10. Once the machine has finished its startup process, you'll be left looking at a welcome screen here. The background picture may be different. If your computer has internet access, the Microsoft readily gives you a new picture to look at. Computers within a corporate or education setting often have this locked down. In the bottom right, you have a few status symbols. The first, on the left, is a network indicator. This quickly shows you whether your computer is connected to a network and whether it has internet access. If you notice a red cross in the picture, this shows that there is a major problem with the network connection. Normally it means that there is no connection at all. If there is a yellow warning symbol, this normally means that the computer can't access the internet. Next to this, we have a battery indicator. As this is a laptop, you can see it's nearly at full charge and the plug symbol shows it's currently charging. To move on from this screen, you can either click the left mouse button or you can press any key. Computers will often ask you to press any key to continue, but what do they mean when they ask you this? Well, any key normally means any normal key on the keyboard. By normal, I mean any number, letter, punctuation key, or the enter or spacebar. Personally, I normally stick to the enter or spacebar. The caps lock, shift and alt keys often aren't included in the any definition, so it's best to stick to one of the others. So now we're at the logon screen. At the moment, there's only a single user of this machine called Teacher. At this point, we still have some icons in the bottom right. We still have the network icon. If this machine used wireless, we could click on the icon to connect to a wireless network or change the network it's currently connected to. Next is an accessibility icon. Click on this and you have access to a number of accessibility options. High contrast switches the color scheme of windows to make it easier for visually impaired users. Sticky keys serializes keystrokes, so instead of pressing multiple keys at a time, for example to enter an uppercase A, 
you would press and hold the shift key and then press the A key while holding down shift. With sticky keys turned on, you press and release the shift key and then you can press the letter A. With filter keys turned on, the system will ignore brief or repeated keystrokes in order to make it easier for users with hand tremors. The on-screen keyboard allows you to enter text by clicking on the relevant key on the keyboard, often used for tablets. The magnifier tool is another aid for the visually impaired. This will magnify a section of the screen that the mouse is pointing at. There's a little lag in the mouse pointer display on my system, although it won't be there on most machines. The magnifying tool can be a little disorientating at first. To access the settings for this tool, click on the magnifying glass. From here you can adjust the magnification or click the X in the top right to close the tool. Lastly is the narrator. This is another aid for visually impaired, this time giving audible feedback of what is displayed on the screen, particularly where or what the mouse is hovering over at any given point. The last icon in this area is a power symbol. From here you can restart or shut down the machine. Perhaps you've started the computer and then decided that you no longer need to use it. With this, you can shut the machine down without needing to log in first. To log into the computer, we first need to set the focus and password box. Do this by clicking the mouse while the pointer is over the box. We can now type in the password. You'll notice that no matter what you type in, it will appear as black dot. This is a security feature and it's designed to stop people looking over your shoulder and seeing what your password is. If you aren't sure what you've typed, you can click on this eye symbol on the right to show the actual characters that you've entered. Once you've entered the password, you can either click on the arrow on the right, or to save yourself switching between the keyboard and mouse, you can also hit the enter key on the keyboard. This completes the logon procedure for a single user machine. Let's take a quick look at how to log on with different accounts. This system has multiple user accounts associated with it. An example of where this type of setup might be found is for a family. Each member has their own account. This is a better way to set the machine up than having a single shared account. Not only is it better for security, but each user can tailor the environment to their own preferences. I'll go through how to customise the work environment in a later lecture. To log in with a different account, just click on the desired account on the left, and then click on the password box. Enter your password, and either click on the arrow again, or hit the enter key. If you type in the wrong password, the system first tells you that you've entered it incorrectly. Once you click the OK button, it gives you another opportunity to enter it. This time, just below the password box, you'll see a password hint. The system will have asked you to include a hint when you first set up the password, probably when you first set the machine up. My machine is just used for testing. The password is the same as the username. I wouldn't recommend doing this on a normal machine, but this, as this one is only being used to create this course, it's fine. Therefore, my password hint tells me the password is the same as the username, in this case, teacher. Often in a corporate or education environment, the machine will be set up not to show a username, so you will need to enter this along with the password. This is often done for security reasons. If a machine looks like this, then first click in the top box and enter your username, in this case, teacher. Then either click on the password box or hit the tab key. Enter your password and hit enter or click on the arrow again. Now that we've successfully logged into the computer, let's take a look at how to get back out again. Right now we're at the Windows desktop. In the next lecture I'll give you a full tour of this screen. But to get back out of the system, we need to click on the Windows logo in the bottom left. This is often called the Windows Start button, because in previous versions of Windows it was actually labelled as Start, rather than having the Windows logo. So move the mouse to the bottom left and click the left mouse button on the logo. This opens the Start menu. At the moment, all we're interested in is the first few icons on the left edge. The top of these, which will have your account picture on, I haven't created a picture on the teacher account, so it just shows a generic grey outline. If we click this, we jump to the settings screen to change account settings. The option Lock the computer takes the machine to a screen that requires the current user's password to be entered before it can be used again. Quite useful if you're popping away from your machine for a few minutes and you don't want anyone else to use it while you're away. The next option is sign out. Clicking this takes us back to the login screen. If you're using a multiple user account machine, then the other accounts will be listed here. Clicking one will ask you for that account's password and switch directly to that account. The next icon down, looking like a cog, accesses the computer's settings. I'll show you some of the options that could be accessed through this in a later lecture. 
The bottom icon here looks like the universal power symbol. Clicking this, we get two options. Restart, which will turn the computer off and then immediately turn it back on again, eventually taking us back to the sign-in or welcome screen. Computers can be a little temperamental at times. If you think the machine isn't quite running right, then the first thing to do is give it a restart. You'll be surprised the number of problems this sorts out. Then there is shut down. You may be wondering why you can't just power the machine off. Well, even if you haven't actually told the computer to do anything, it's still working away in the background. It can have many different files open and lots of different programs running in the background. If you just cut power to the system, it can lead to lots of different problems. An open file can become corrupt, meaning that its contents can't be read anymore. Worst case scenario is that some of the fundamental Windows programs become corrupt, meaning that your machine won't be able to start up the next time you need to use it. By clicking the shutdown option, Windows will gracefully close all the system files and programs it has been using and turn the power off itself. In this lecture, we have identified how to start a computer, how to log on to it successfully, and then how to shut down and restart the machine, and the difference between the two options. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.